So what is an acid? We've all seen cartoons with bright green liquids that ooze and can eat through anything. But what about in the real world? Well, toilet cleaners can contain strong acids. All citrus fruits contain citric acid. And you might even put acid on your chips. Just because something's an acid doesn't necessarily mean it's dangerous, but some can be incredibly harmful. So how do we determine the potency of an acid? Here in the lab, we can look at the concentration of acids in solution, and that can tell us a lot. This two molar solution of hydrochloric acid is corrosive, but this six molar solution will cause a lot more damage if I spilled it. Not all acids are created equal though. Six molar solution of citric acid is not as corrosive as a six molar solution of hydrochloric acid. That's because a six molar solution of hydrochloric acid is far more ready to dissociate into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. When it reacts with this zinc metal, the hydrogen ions are taking electrons and becoming hydrogen gas. In the case of strong acids, all of the molecules in solution will dissociate into their ions. This means that a one molar solution of hydrochloric acid will have one mole per litre of hydrogen ions and one mole per litre of chloride ions too. The concentration of hydrogen ions in solution is quite a difficult thing to imagine. Fortunately, there's a simple way to think about the concentration of hydrogen ions and acidity called the pH scale. pH means potential for hydrogen and can be simply calculated with an equation. The pH is equal to So a one molar solution of hydrochloric acid has a pH of one, and a one millimolar solution of hydrochloric acid has a pH of three. In a bottle of pure water, out of every 10 million water molecules, one of those molecules will have dissociated into H plus and OH minus. Using our equation, we can work out that the pH of pure water is seven. On the other side of the pH scale, Bases are molecules which can really readily accept hydrogen ions. Sodium hydroxide can readily accept a hydrogen ion to form H2O and a sodium ion. In basic solution, hydrogen ions are so readily accepted by the base molecules that the concentration of hydrogen ions is very low, meaning a low potential for hydrogen. In our equation, the negative sign at the start means that a low concentration of hydrogen ions means a high pH. If we take an acid which wants to lose hydrogen ions and a base which wants to take hydrogen ions and mix them, we can get a neutral solution. To get the pH to exactly seven, the amount of acid molecules must match the amount of base molecules. The best way to achieve this is to use a titration. We can use a burette to add a very specific amount of one solution to another. If we don't know the concentration of one of our solutions, then we can make a standard solution with a well-known concentration using a volumetric flask. We can then titrate our standard solution against the unknown solution until we get a perfectly neutral green color on the pH scale. To make a standard solution, we take this volumetric flask. It's shaped this way with a large bulb at the bottom and then a narrow stem so that I can more accurately add the right amount of liquid. I'm going to add a weighed amount of sodium hydroxide to this flask and then fill it up to the mark with deionized water. Since the neck of the flask is so narrow, a small amount of volume will make a large difference to the height of the meniscus. The bottom of the meniscus should rest perfectly on the bottom of the mark. We have made our standard solution of sodium hydroxide, and we know that the concentration is 0.5 molar. Now I'm going to titrate it against this solution of hydrochloric acid, but we don't know the concentration. I've added some universal indicator so that we can see when it's neutral. Now I'm going to fill this burette. It's important when you fill a burette to lower it so that it's below your eye level when you pour. This reduces the danger of a spillage. When the burette is full, I'll note down the volume. 
Now, I'll open the tap and allow the solution to pour into the acid. Once the colour begins to change, we are close to neutral. So I'll slow right down and allow the solution to mix thoroughly before adding more. Now, drop by drop, the base is neutralising the acid. Once the solution is green, we can note down the final burette volume and subtract that from the initial volume. So we've looked at acids and bases and how to make a volumetric solution to calculate the concentration of an unknown solution. This is crucial to analytical chemistry and has a real-world application in forensic science.